This story starts with an idea. A crazy idea, but an idea that I wanted to see through to the end to see if it's possible. Here's the challenge. If all our moves in battles are Explosion, a powerful normal type move that causes your own Pokemon to faint, can you beat Pokemon Fire Red version? Our journey begins when rival ZX Few would like to take on ZX Many, and we have our exploding Squirtle attack our rival's Bulbasaur, and since both Pokemon faint, we don't get any experience, and it counts that we lost this battle. As we walk up to Viridian City to continue the game, we want to run away from any wild Pokemon encounters because we don't have any Pokeballs yet. So fighting these wild Pokemon isn't of any benefit to us because we can't get any experience points for defeating them. We stop by the Pokemart here and we get Oak's Parcel, and when we return Oak's Parcel back to Professor Oak, we are given something very, very valuable for this challenge. Five Pokeballs. Now it's time to catch some Pokemon. We catch the first Pidgey that we run into and we name it Explurred. It's like a portmanteau of Explosion and Bird. Now when we have a battle, we can swap to a second Pokemon. The second Pokemon can use Explosion to defeat our opponent, and our first Pokemon gets some experience because it was sent out in some part of the battle. It's amazing that we can actually get experience now and level up our Pokemon by using this swapping strategy. But after almost every battle, we're going to want to head back to a Pokemon Center and fully heal our Pokemon. And thank goodness, healing at a Poke Center is free. Having a bigger team means that we might not have to go to the Poke Center as often, so we caught a Rattata, naming it Rataboom, and we're trying to get six total Pokemon, which is the max that you could carry with you at a time. We had to rely a bit on luck here because it's easier to catch a Pokemon when their HP is lower, but we don't really have any moves that can weaken these wild Pokemon, since Explosion is so strong that it defeats all these wild Pokemon in a single hit. And now, we're in a situation where we can actually train our Pokemon. We start the battle with C4 Turtle, swap to another Pokemon, explode, and C4 Turtle starts to level up. I wish it was as simple as only having to train our main Pokemon, but if our supporting Pokemon become too underleveled, then they won't be strong enough to defeat the opponent's Pokemon in a single hit. So we do actually need a somewhat balanced team in terms of levels. As we head west of Viridian City, we run into our first rematch with our rival, ZX Few. Our rival has only two Pokemon, so this shouldn't be too bad, even if we can't one-hit KO his Pokemon. He starts off with a Pidgey, so we swap to a Pidgey, and I am super happy to see that even though the rival's Pidgey used Sand Attack, it doesn't reduce our accuracy because our Pidgey has the Keen Eye ability. Imagine having your accuracy lowered, using the attack explosion, and missing your opponent with your powerful attack. That would be very sad. Since the opponent's Pidgey is so strong, its tackle attack is almost strong enough to defeat us in a single turn. But we do get in an explosion attack, and that is good enough to take out the Pidgey in a single hit. Next up is Bulbasaur, so we swap our Squirtle to a Rattata, and tackle half kills us here. We're unfortunately not fast enough to get out an explosion, and we lose Rataboom without an explosion. That's okay though, because we can still send out our next Pokemon and still get experience, so I swap to C4 Bird, and we must be pretty underleveled here, because our explosion attack does surprisingly little damage against the Bulbasaur. We're running low on Pokemon, so I'm worried that we might actually lose this battle. I swap to C4 Rat, and Bulbasaur gets out a Growl attack on us, which lowers our attack before we use Explosion. But this is still somehow strong enough to take out Bulbasaur, giving some sweet, sweet experience to our Squirtle and defeating our rival. It's a pretty momentous occasion, and it is definitely time to celebrate after winning our first trainer battle, even though our team is looking pretty beat up after this battle. Next up is Viridian Forest, where there are some trainers, which is nice because they give great experience, and we'll be able to work on leveling up some of our weaker Pokémon. The nice thing is that sometimes you might not have to go to the Poke Center after every single battle, depending on how many Pokémon your opponent has. Sometimes you can actually take on two trainers in a row before you have to walk back to the Poke Center, which is nice. We saw a wild Pikachu, and it's kind of sad that we had to explode this Pikachu and we couldn't catch it, but there is an advantage to using mostly normal types. Since Explosion is a normal type move, it should be even stronger if a normal type Pokemon uses it because of the same type advantage. After making it out of Viridian Forest, I thought that our team was looking pretty solid. We've got two level 11s, a level 7, and then some weaker Pokemon. I wanted to see if we were ready to take on Brock, the first gym leader, so let's face the trainer in his gym before we battle Brock. Camper Liam has two Pokemon, so this shouldn't be too bad, right? 
We are up against the Geodude first, and after swapping Pokemon, a tackle half kills us. But luckily, our Pidgey is still faster, so we get out an explosion. And that explosion does almost no damage, because normal attacks are not very effective on rock types. So it looks like we might be in some trouble. I sent out Rataboom, one of our strongest Pokemon, and it's still not good enough to finish Geodude after it uses its explosion attack. Geodude uses Defense Curl, which is a pretty scary thought. Imagine these guys using Defense Curl earlier in the fight and making Explosion even weaker. But we finally take out this Geodude, and it only took three Pokemon Explosions to do that. Next up is Sandshrew, which is just a ground type, so at least Explosion is going to be normally effective instead of not very effective. Unfortunately, Sandshrew uses Defense Curl after we swap Pokemon, but our Bird Bomb is a nice high level, so that explosion is still good enough to defeat it, and we are left with two Pokemon on our team. If that's how tough the trainer of the gym is, we might need some more practice before taking on Brock. I did want to try taking on Brock to see how bad this would be, and he only has two Pokemon luckily. But after five explosions, I could only defeat one of his Pokemon, and his Onyx was pretty strong too. There wasn't a way for me to win this one yet. And this was our first major roadblock in the challenge, and I was thinking that this might be our biggest hurdle to overcome. We did a lot of grinding on wild Pokemon here and leveled up our Pokemon a lot, and then we had a stronger looking team before we were ready to take on Brock again. When we take on Brock the next time, we first switch to Bird Bomb, and Geodude starts with the Defense Curl. We use an explosion, and that isn't enough to take out this Geodude. We send out C4 Bird as the next Pokemon, getting ready to use another explosion, and for some reason, Brock decides to switch out to Onyx, so we end up using our explosion on Onyx instead of the weakened Geodude. C4 Bird's explosion does very little damage, so I send out C4 Turtle, and this explosion also does not much damage. But Onyx is almost defeated now. I send out Rataboom, and with that, the explosion attack is enough to finish out Onyx, so we have two low-level Pokemon left, and we we have to defeat a weakened Geodude. I send out C4 Rat because he has the higher attack power after I check the stats of my Pokemon, and that explosion is luckily enough to take out Geodude and defeat Brock. We overcame our first major roadblock and we got our first gym badge in this challenge. I was expecting most of the rest of the game to be smooth sailing from here, because we could probably take out a lot of enemies with a single hit using Explosion, as long as our team is relatively balanced and we don't have any super weak Pokemon, so it's super important that we train up our weak Pokemon in both battles and grinding on wild Pokemon. I saw a wild Jigglypuff and I really wanted to catch it because I thought the idea of an exploding Jigglypuff was funny, so Pink Boom now ends up joining our party for now. The trickiest thing about Mount Moon is that there are quite a few trainer battles there, and after one or two battles, most of your team is defeated, so you have to run all the way back to the Poké Center before you can continue back through Mount Moon again. Eventually, we made our way out of Mount Moon to Cerulean City, where we got to have another rival fight. This time, our rival has four Pokémon, so things are getting scary and our explosions have to be really effective. Two of our Pokemon fainted before we could defeat one of his Pokemon, and this was starting to look grim. It looks like we were actually running into another roadblock where we were starting to become underleveled. So we had to go into some tall grass to do some grinding, a lot of swapping Pokemon, exploding, running to the Pokemon Center, and repeating that. And our Pokemon grew so much that you might not even recognize some of them now. Some of our Pokemon are even evolved now. This time, when we take on the rival, we start off with switching to C4 Turtle. We get hit with a sand attack, so I'm really hoping Explosion doesn't miss, and it lands, and it takes out his bird in a single hit. Our level 10 Pidgey is strong enough to take out a level 15 Rattata in a single hit, and it just goes to show how powerful Explosion is as a move. Abra is a Pokemon that I am not at all worried about facing right now, but when that guy grows up into an Alakazam that can use Future Sight and Psychic, that is going to be tough. Bulbasaur put our Bird Bomb to sleep and tried to wear it down with some weak attacks, but we luckily woke up in time, exploded, and showed our rival the power of explosions again. We made our way up Nugget Bridge, stopping by the Poké Center after almost every battle so that we don't run out of Pokémon, and up on the way to Bills, there are all kinds of trainer fights here, which is great, but you do have to run back to the Poké Center a lot. With our strong team, we were eventually ready to take on the second gym leader, Misty. Bird Bomb is strong enough to take out her Staryu in a single hit, and Misty's final and second Pokémon is Starmie. 
Peekaboom gets confused and actually defeats itself by hurting itself in confusion before it gets a chance to use Explosion. Even though Jigglypuff has a low attack, its Explosion is still strong enough to take out Starmie, which was kind of surprising to see. While we are in Cerulean, I decide to stop by the daycare center, which might be a good idea. When a Pokemon is at the daycare center, it gets experience for every step you take. And since we are doing a lot of walking back and forth, going from trainers to the Pokemon Center and back, I'm expecting that maybe leaving a Pokemon here is a good way to train it, since our current method of getting experience is a bit tough. Next, we walk through this underground path towards Vermilion City, we pop up here where there are a few trainers, and there are trainers east of Vermilion City also, so we're doing a lot of running back and forth to the Pokemon Center, so that means that our Pokemon in the Daycare Center is getting a lot of experience while we are doing these battles here. We head on to the SSN next, and there are a lot of battles here, the most notable being our rival battle. I decide to go for a quick explosion at the start without switching Pokemon, even though we miss out on some experience, because I just want to get rid of that Pidgeotto quickly, and this does end up working. I send out C4 Turtle, and my rival sends out Ivasaur, so we switch to Bird Bomb. Bird Bomb is put to sleep just like in the last rival battle, then we wake up, explode, and take out another one of the rival's Pokemon. Our Jigglypuff, Pink Boom, is actually a much higher level than Raticate, and it's crazy to see that we actually have higher level Pokemon than our rival now. That explosion is obviously enough to take out the Raticate, and all that our rival has left now is Kadabra. Kadabra uses Kinesis on Clefairy, which reduces our accuracy, then we use Explosion after that, and Explosion actually misses this time. So as you can see, if your accuracy is lowered, or if your opponent's evasiveness goes up, you can actually have your Pokémon use Explosion, defeating itself without even scratching your opponent. I sent out my second last Pokémon, getting ready to explode this Kadabra, and it uses Kinesis again. If this Explosion attack misses, we actually lose the fight, because we'd be down to our final Pokémon, but luckily, Explosion hits, Kadabra is defeated, and we win another rival fight. The next gym leader that we took on was the third gym leader, Lieutenant Surge, who has three Pokémon. His Voltorb was taken out with a single explosion, Pikachu was a bit scary because it used Double Team, but we were lucky that Explosion still hit it, and Raichu also used Double Team, but we were lucky that Explosion hit, and that is another gym leader completed. We made our way over to Rock Tunnel, and you might be wondering how HMs will work in this challenge. We can actually teach our Pokémon HM moves to use outside of battles, but all four moves in the battle are still edited to the explosion. Rock Tunnel was luckily and surprisingly not super tough, because all of our Pokémon were pretty well leveled, so even though we were up against a lot of Rock-type Pokémon from trainers, we still plowed through them. And when we finally made it through to Lavender Town, you might be starting to worry about what's going to be coming up soon. Ghost-type Pokémon. Normal-type attacks, like Explosion, deal no damage at all to Ghost-types. But before we worry about that, we've got another rival fight first, and our rival has five Pokémon this time. So even if a single Explosion doesn't defeat his Pokémon in a single hit, then we can't win this fight. After realizing how difficult this fight was, I decided to go back to our daycare center and check on our Rataboom. Our Rataboom grew to level 27 while we were gone, making it one of our strongest Pokémon now. And since the daycare center was so effective at training Pokémon, I'll leave C4 Bird here for now and maybe come back for it near the very end of the game. There is one very important item that is absolutely and 100% necessary to complete this challenge, and that item is a revive. It revives a fainted Pokémon, restoring half of its maximum HP. It's really important to save up all of our money from trainer battles, and use these revives very carefully, because at the Elite Four, we'll have several battles in a row, and that will be literally impossible without using a lot of revives. But before we worry about the Elite Four, let's focus on what's in front of us right now. The next rival battle. Pink Boom gets hit with a sand attack, but we're luckily still accurate enough to land an explosion and take out Pidgeotto in a single hit. Gyarados is scary because its special ability is Intimidate, which lowers your attack, which makes you do less damage, but our high-leveled Peekaboom is still good enough to survive Gyarados' attack and take out the Gyarados in a single hit. Growlithe is an easy one-hit KO, Kadabra is an easy one-hit KO, and for Ivasaur, I just go for a quick explosion right away instead of swapping partners, so we miss out on getting experience for this final Pokémon, but we're guaranteed a nice quick win against our rival. And this is where things start to get really scary, and it's possible that our challenge might come to an end. We really want to avoid these trainers because they have ghost-type Pokémon, so we can't harm them with explosion. 
You can actually avoid a lot of these trainers, but there are some trainers that you can't walk around. The first trainer that we have to battle is this Chandler right here, who has a single Pokemon, a Ghastly. Can this one ghosty boy bring an end to our explosive challenge? I was switching back and forth between Pokemon because there was something I was really, really hoping for. Something that might make this a lot easier. I was thinking that maybe I'd have to wait until Ghastly uses up all of its moves and then it would start to use Struggle, which is an attack that you use when you're out of usable moves and it damages both the opponent and the user. But luckily, this Ghastly did in fact have the move Curse. It was what I was hoping for. If a ghost Pokemon uses Curse, it gives up half of its HP and it lays a curse on its opponent, which takes damage every turn. I kept switching my Pokemon back and forth and then Ghastly used Curse again taking out the second half of its HP, defeating itself. This is the first time we have won a battle without having a single Pokemon on our side faint, and it is incredible. There's another necessary battle on the way up, another Chandler that we can't avoid, and this trainer also has only one Ghastly. And luckily for us, this Ghastly also knows the move Curse. As a Twitch viewer pointed out during the live stream, it's a bit ironic that the move Curse is actually a blessing for us. And there's only one more Chandler that we have to fight after that, and it's just like the previous one. So we don't have the Sylph scope yet, so we're not ready to take on this Marowak here yet, but it's great to know that these trainers with Ghost Pokemon actually didn't stop us on our explosion-only journey. And with a newfound confidence boost, we can continue through the game with a new pep in our step. As we continue through the game, I ran into a double battle against a pair of trainers, and as if the attack Explosion wasn't already damaging enough to my own party, Explosion also attacks your own partner. But at least it attacks both of your opponents. So when Pink Boom uses an Explosion here, it takes out both opponents, your own teammates, and yourself. In the next route, we've got a lot of trainer battles and a lot of running back to the Pokemon Center. We eventually make it to Celadon City, and we've got to stop by Team Rocket's hideout. Here's the fun fact about this poster, by the way. Normally, you have to battle this guy, and after defeating him, you can press A on this poster, and that makes the staircase appear. But, the funny thing is, if you have walkthrough walls active, you can actually walk up to the poster and press A on the poster without him noticing. But, we did actually fight this guy, and all the fights in the Team Rocket hideout were super easy, and we eventually made it to the leader, Giovanni. He starts off with Onyx, which is definitely giving Brock flashbacks, so this might be difficult. It looks like Rataboom has the highest attack of all our Pokemon, so we send out Rataboom, and an explosion is actually strong enough to take out this Onyx in a single hit, even though it's not very effective. Next is Rhyhorn, another Pokemon that's partially a rock type, so I'm a bit worried about how Explosion will do, but Bird Bomb is strong enough to take it out in a single hit again. Giovanni's last Pokemon is Kangaskhan, and our Explosion from C4 Turtle is good enough to take it out in a single hit. After defeating Giovanni, we get the Sylph Scope, so we can go and rescue Mr. Fuji. So we make it back to Pokemon Tower here. We get a message from a ghost as we walk towards this staircase, and it turns out that this is a Marowak that we have to fight. We of course do the only thing that we know how to do, Explosion, and we defeat the Marowak in a single hit. The ghost was the restless spirit of Cubone's mother. The mother's spirit was calmed. Having Eradicate literally explode in front of you does sound like something that might calm your spirit, so I'm glad that we could help here. We finally defeat all of the Team Rocket members guarding Mr. Fuji, and when we tell him we're here to rescue him, he says, Thanks, but I came here of my own free will. I don't know what these Team Rocket members were doing here if he came here of his own free will, but at least he could leave now and we get the Poke Flute, which is not only important for progressing through the game, but there's something very valuable that we can use this for later. We continue through the game, we wake up a sleeping Snorlax with the Poke Flute, and I kind of wish we could capture it because Snorlax is incredibly strong, but we have no Pokeballs at all and it'd be very difficult to capture at full HP, so we have to give this Snorlax the Explosion Treatment, where we explode and it fades. After the battle, a message pops up. Snorlax calmed down. It gave a huge yawn and returned to the mountains. I swear these messages get more and more absurd as you play with explosion only. We continue down to Fuchsia City and even though we haven't gotten one of the earlier badges yet, let's try out a challenge by seeing how tough this gym will be. We take on the first trainer in the gym and we see that he has a level 38 Hypno. 
I send out a level 29 Eradicate, and Explosion Steel takes it out in a single hit. It is incredible how powerful this move is. We make our way through the gym until we reach Koga, the leader, who has four Pokemon. A coughing doesn't seem particularly strong, so even Pink Boom can defeat it with an explosion in one hit. Muck is a bit scary because it's starting to use Minimize, which is increasing its evasiveness, so our attacks might miss. But luckily, we land the hit and take it out, even though it used Minimize twice. The next coughing is defeated with a single explosion, and then out comes Weezing. I swap Pokemon so that we could get some experience when we explode, and Weezing uses Smoke Screen. I really don't want to miss my attack, so I swap Pokemon again, because I'm pretty sure your accuracy gets reset when you swap out. It uses Smoke Screen again, so I swap again. Eventually, Rataboom uses Explosion, and this level 43 Weezing falls from a single hit, and we have got another Gym Badge. Koga is actually the 5th Gym Leader, so going back to the 4th Gym in Celadon should be super easy, but first, there's something incredibly important that we need, and it might not be for the reason that you think. We need to catch a Pokemon called Ditto, and not because it can transform into other Pokemon, because if we catch a Ditto, it will only know the move Explosion. Well, in the Elite Four, there's a trainer who uses a lot of Ghost-type Pokemon named Agatha. And as a hint for what we're going to do with Ditto, we are going to name our Ditto Agatha, and you'll soon see why we caught this Ditto. So all of our battle attacks in this challenge are swapped to be Explosion instead of the attacks that the Pokemon normally knows. And the PP that you have, where PP is how many times you can use a move, is based on the actual move that the Pokemon knows, not Explosion. And this Ditto only knows Transform, which has 10 PP, so all of the other move slots, although they appear as Explosion, they will all always have 0 PP for Ditto. The Gym Leader, Erika, was super easy since we've already defeated the 5th Gym Leader. Going back to the 4th Gym Leader, Erika was super easy. And then after that, we went over to save Silco in Saffron City. We have to face our rival here, and our rival has 5 Pokemon in this fight. 5 high level Pokemon at that, and we are now starting to become a bit under leveled here. Luckily, Rataboom is still strong enough to take out Pidgeot in a single hit. Gyarados comes out next, and C4 Turtle actually isn't strong enough to beat it in a single move, so that means that we need to use one more explosion. Growlithe is defeated in a single move with explosion, and Alakazam uses Future Sight, which is absolutely terrifying because we might lose two Pokemon in a single turn and suddenly lose the battle. I have to use a revive here, and then I use an explosion, which takes out Alakazam in a single hit, and then we have to swap out to a different Pokemon to face off against our rival's final Pokemon. I send out Rataboom, and that's when our Future Sight hits. And this Future Sight is strong enough to take out Rataboom in a single hit, so we only have our Ditto left right now. I revive Rataboom, switch to Rataboom, and luckily we can take out Venusaur, defeating our rival with one surviving Pokemon left on our team, and it took two revives to win this fight. At the top of Silphco, we have to take on the head of Team Rocket, Giovanni, and the Giovanni fight starts with a Nidorino, and an explosion can easily take out Nidorino, and then Nidoqueen comes out next, and I'd love to use explosion, but double kick is way too strong, and it takes out Peekaboom before we can attack. Luckily, Bird Bomb is out next, and even though there's a 10 level difference between us, Explosion is still strong enough to take out Nido Queen. And after that, with our Ditto against Kangaskhan, we have another Pokemon defeated in a single turn, getting some experience for our other Pokemon. Giovanni's last Pokemon is Rhyhorn, so I saved Rataboom for this moment, who is our most powerful Pokemon, hoping to be able to take out Rhyhorn in a single turn, but it's not enough damage, so it looks like we'll have to switch back to Pink Boom and revive somebody using up another revive. If we were a few levels stronger, we could have defeated it in a single turn, but like this we just revive Rataboom. Pink Boom is being careful to not be defeated, and I don't want to lose my Pokemon in a single turn as I swap to it, so I decide to just try going for an explosion with Pink Boom, and this is strong enough to defeat the Rhyhorn, luckily. Next, we go to gym number 6 with Sabrina, the Psychic-type user who has 4 Pokemon. Kadabra starts off with a Future Sight, which is often a scary attack, and Peekaboom's Explosion is strong enough to take out Kadabra in a single turn. Mr. Mime is next, and I swap over to Bird Bomb, hoping that Bird Bomb will be strong enough to take out Mr. Mime so that Agatha can get some nice experience. Mr. Mime hits us with a side Beam as we switch out, and then before we get a chance to react or do anything, the Future Sight from before hits Bird Bomb and finishes off Bird Bomb before we can even attack. 
I send out C4 Turtle, and Mr. Mime uses the attack barrier, which sharply raises defense. So that means Explosion will do a lot less damage now. C4 Turtle uses Explosion, and it doesn't even take away half of Mr. Mime's HP. Radaboom uses Explosion next, and that is luckily strong enough to finish off Mr. Mime. We've got two Pokemon left, and so does Sabrina, so we're probably going to have to use some revives here. Pink Boom faces off against Venomoth, and the barrier wears off right as Pink Boom explodes, so we take out Venomoth in a single hit. It's one Pokemon on each side now, so I have to revive a Pokemon because I lose the fight if I've had a Pokemon and my last Pokemon uses Explosion. Alakazam uses Psychic and defeats me in one hit so I have to revive another Pokemon because I'm down to my last Pokemon again. Alakazam uses Psychic again, and you can see the trap that we are in now. We keep getting one-shot KO'd, and we are burning through our precious revives. I was a bit unlucky to get into this situation, and I could definitely avoid this if I planned the battle more carefully, so I decided to reset the game and start the fight again. When I made it to Alakazam this time, I had three Pokemon left instead of just one. And even more luckily for us, Alakazam used Calm Mind instead of Psychic. So we got to use an explosion, and that took out the Alakazam in a single hit. Six of our eight badges are collected now, and we are doing okay. I was thinking that Blaine, the next gym leader, would be pretty easy because he just has fire types, so explosion is normally effective on him, and Giovanni, the final gym leader, might be tough because he has some rock types. But for some reason, Blaine was a lot harder than I expected. I wanted to swap to Pink Boom in this battle, and before I could use Explosion, the Growlithe's Fire Blast attack defeated me in one hit. Next, Peekaboom survived getting hit by Fire Blast, and its Explosion attack was luckily strong enough to take out the Growlithe. A Ponyta was next, and after swapping to Agatha so that we could get in some experience from being in the battle, a Fire Blast lands, and it defeats Agatha in a single hit. I bring out C4 Turtle next, and luckily that explosion is strong enough to defeat Ponyta, so Blaine only has two Pokemon left now, but we are missing a lot of our team. When Rabidash comes out, I swap to Radaboom so that we could give our Pidgeot some more experience, and another Fire Blast lands on us, but this time we can survive, just barely. I heal up using a Hyper Potion that we found, thinking that maybe the next Fire Blast attack will miss, but the Fire Blast attack actually lands a critical hit, so it kills us in one hit. We are down to our last Pokemon, and Blaine still has two Pokemon at full health so we need some revives right now. I kept trying to revive and heal and bring some other Pokemon into the fight so that we could hit Rabidash with an explosion, but Rabidash kept defeating my Pokemon. We were starting to become underleveled here, and it was really starting to show in this battle. At one point, Rabidash sprang up high for a two-turn attack, so I was really hoping that I was slower than Rabidash so that it would attack and come down, then I could explode and damage it. Imagine if I was faster and I used Explosion while it was up high and my Explosion attack missed, but luckily everything went exactly as planned and the Explosion defeated Rabidash. Blaine and I are both down to our final Pokemon, with Blaine having a level 47 Arcanine. So back to the revives we go, and I'm just trying to heal up my team so that we could get ready to get a good explosion attack onto the Arcanine without our entire team fainting. C4 Turtle gets an explosion onto Arcanine, but it's not enough to defeat it, and we just get its HP into the red. Blaine uses a Hyper Potion, which might sound unfair. How can your opponent use items during a battle? Meanwhile, we've spent about the last 20 turns healing our Pokemon. As the fight goes on, we continue burning through revives and healing items, trying to get a good hit on Arcanine as he keeps one-shotting all of my Pokemon. When we finally have a chance to use an explosion on Arcanine, it works, and we're able to finish him off. That was a lot tougher than I thought it'd be, and that makes me a bit worried about Giovanni, who is the next gym leader who's coming up now. After beating this 7th gym in the Fire Red Leaf Green version, Bill is here to greet you and he asks you if you want to go on a side quest, but we're going to say no because we don't want to get sidetracked, we just want to go beat the game. We head on over to the final gym leader, where we battle Giovanni for the last time, who now has 5 Pokemon. He starts off with a Rhyhorn, and rock types are always scary in this challenge because normal type attacks like Explosion are not very effective against rock. I swap to Jigglypuff, thinking that we can get in a weak Explosion and then use a stronger Explosion to finish him off, but Rhyhorn's Earthquake is strong enough to take out Pink Boom in a single hit. I send out Bird Bomb next, worried that Explosion isn't going to be strong enough to take out Rhyhorn, but we get a critical hit and take out Rhyhorn. I'm not sure if we needed the crit, but I am glad that we got it. 
Next up is Dugtrio, who is only a ground type, so we shouldn't need something too strong against it to beat it. Our Clefairy took one hit after being switched out, and the Dugtrio was affected by a track after that. But unfortunately, Clefairy couldn't survive both hits, so we didn't get to use an explosion here. I send out Agatha next, and this explosion is good enough to take out the Dugtrio in a single hit. We are facing off against Nidoqueen next, and our C4 Turtle has now fully evolved into a Blastoise, and our exploding Blastoise is strong enough to take out Nidoqueen in a single hit. Nidoking is the next Pokemon that we are basing from Giovanni, and we only have one Pokemon left, so we need to start using revives here. Radaboom survives the Earthquake attack after using a turn to revive Pidgeot, so I go for the risk of using Explosion, hoping that we'll be faster than Nidoking, and we are faster, and the Explosion is strong enough to take out Nidoking. There's just one Pokemon left now, so after using a revive, we use Explosion on Rhyhorn, and that takes out a bit more than half of its health. After a few more revives, we end up sending out Bird Bomb again, and with another Explosion attack, Bird Bomb finishes off Rhyhorn, and Giovanni, the 8th Gym Leader, has been defeated. All 8 Gym Leaders have been defeated, and with all 4 battle attacks edited to be Explosion. Before we make it to the Elite Four, there's another battle with our rival, and our rival has six Pokemon. So we blast through a few revives here, and with a lot of explosions, we are able to take him out. On our way through Victory Road, I realized that the wild Pokemon here were pretty high levels compared to what we have, so I decided to catch in our book. It's not a normal type, it's a poison type, so it won't have the same type bonus for if you use the move Explosion, but it might be able to resist some poison attacks decently well in the Elite Four. And one final pit stop that we have before the Elite Four was stopping by the power plant and catching a Zapdos. Fast, high leveled, and the last Pokemon that we'll ever need in this challenge. So after failing with a lot of Ultra Balls, I decided to just use the Master Ball to catch it since we won't need the Master Ball later in this challenge anyways. And now it is time to sell off all of the items that we don't need and buy as many revives and healing items as possible. Let's hope that 120 revives can take us all the way through the Elite Four because we don't have any more money at all. Elite Four Lorelei has five Pokemon and she starts off with a Dugong. I switched to C4 Turtle thinking that we could tank a water or an ice attack and we get hit with ice beam. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but we're actually frozen. Can you believe it? I keep using explosion hoping that we'll eventually unfreeze and when we are able to use explosion it almost gets dugong's health into the red. I'm glad that it's not in the red because that means that Lorelei isn't going to heal dugong so we send out our Arbuck named our bomb and that explosion is enough to take out dugong. Cloyster is out next and I think Cloyster has some pretty good defense it looks like it has good defense. Luckily it uses hail as I switch so Rataboom survives. I go to use explosion this turn and I just knew that Cloyster would use Protect, and Cloyster uses Protect here. So that means that Radaboom uses Explosion, and the attack doesn't damage Cloyster at all because of Protect. So we had one of our Pokemon explode for nothing. Bird Bomb uses Explosion next, and that gets Cloyster's health down to the red. I use a revive, and Cloyster gets a full restore used on it since his health is in the red, and that's what happens if you get a Pokemon's HP too low without defeating it. I use a few revives while Zapdos is out because we're going to have to revive our Pokemon after the battle anyways, and I might as well revive them now just to be safe for the rest of this battle. Zapdos uses an explosion when it's ready, and that takes out a very good chunk of Cloyster's HP. I send out Arbok after that, and Arbok finishes off the Cloyster with another explosion, so that is two of Lorelei's Pokemon down. I keep using revives and swapping party members, and Arbomb gets to use an explosion on Slowbro next. This takes out about two-thirds of its HP, which is perfect because another explosion should finish it off, and the HP isn't low enough that Lorelei will heal Slowbro. You might notice that I'm using Lemonade and Fresh Water here to heal, instead of using Hyper Potions or Full Restores, and that's because at the time I was thinking that these items are more cost efficient for healing, and I really need to keep as many revives as possible, so that's why I stocked up on these. With some of my team revived and healed up, Zapdos comes out and its explosion finishes off the Slowbro. Lapras gets sent out next, and Arbomb does an explosion attack here that takes out a bit more than half of its health, which is perfect because one more explosion should finish it off. 
but when I sent out my next Pokemon, Lapras has held item triggers, and it's a berry that heals it. So this is going to be close. I have to be careful with who I decide to attack Lapras next so that the explosion is strong enough to beat it. We get our Zapdos out against Lapras again, and that explosion is strong enough to take out the Lapras. We've used a lot of revives in this first fight so far, and Lorelei is down to her final Pokemon, Jinx. I swap to a Bird Bomb with full HP, which I'm hoping will be strong enough to take out Jinx with a single attack since it's a normal type, but Jinx uses Ice Punch, gets a critical hit, and that takes out Bird Bomb in a single hit before we can even attack. I used C4 Turtle as a tank to heal up and revive other Pokemon in my party, and when C4 Turtle fainted, I switched to Bomb Dose, hoping that Bomb Dose would be fast enough to go first. And Bomb Dose is not only fast enough to go first, but Bomb Dose's explosion is strong enough to take out Jinx, defeating Lorelei. After reviving all of my Pokemon after this battle, we were down to 103 revives for the rest of the Elite Four and the Champion. I was most scared of Agatha, and because of how scared I was of Agatha, I kind of overlooked how difficult Bruno might be, who does have some rock types. And it's like we're having flashbacks of fighting Brock all over again, because Bruno starts off by sending out an Onyx. Onyx's Earthquake somehow doesn't defeat our Ditto in a single hit, so we get to use Explosion, and luckily, we get a critical hit right at the start, so we get Onyx to below half health. I send out Bird Bomb next, and that Explosion is enough to take out the Onyx, so we are having a super lucky start so far. A second Onyx is sent out, and when we use our bomb to use Explosion on this Onyx, it takes out maybe one quarter of its health only, so this might be a tough one. Bomb Dose gets sent out next by us, and it gets to use an explosion quickly, which gets Onyx's HP nice and low into the yellow, but not low enough so that Bruno heals, which is perfect. I sent out C4 Turtle next and tried to use some revives while I could. It takes three Earthquake attacks to take out C4 Turtle, and we got the time to use three revives while we were being attacked here. After a free swap to Bomb Dose here, since C4 Turtle fainted, this quick explosion is enough to take out the second Onyx. Next up is Hitmonchan, and I'm hoping that we can take it out in a single hit, but Hitmonchan is actually faster than Bird Bomb, and Sky Uppercut defeats us in a single turn. I send out Radaboom next, who is able to survive the Mock Punch attack, and it's too bad for Hitmonchan that we survived, because our explosion attack is strong enough to take out Hitmonchan in one hit, so that worked out perfectly for us. Hitmon Lee is next, so we want to get in a few heals and revives while we have Arbom out acting as a tank. Hitmon Lee actually goes on a bit of a kill streak as I'm trying to heal up my team in preparation for the Machamp that Bruno still has. And eventually, we have Bomb Dose finish off Hitmon Lee with a single explosion. Machamp might have been one of the scariest Pokemon to face off against in this battle in theory, but Bird Bomb got to go first, and even without a critical hit, that takes out Machamp in a single hit, and we've now defeated Bruno. And next up is the absolutely terrifying Agatha. THE Agatha that I thought might make this challenge impossible. I thought this might be where the challenge ends, but even though this battle ended up being one of the most tedious battles, there was still something surprisingly more difficult after this. Just a quick warning, this battle with Agatha took about half an hour, even though at some parts I was speeding up the game to go through it more quickly. So Agatha's first Pokemon is a Gengar. And you might know that Explosion, which is a normal type attack, doesn't affect ghost types. But there's something very special about our Ditto named Agatha. Ditto has only one attack, and it's Transform. Since all battle moves here are replaced with Explosion, Ditto technically only has one attack slot for Explosion, instead of four attack slots with Explosion like everyone else. In Pokemon, you have something called PP that stands for Power Points, which is how many times you can use a move. If all of your PP for all of your moves are used up and you try to attack, then your Pokemon uses Struggle. Where it tries to attack, it damages your opponent, and it also damages itself. I was thinking that if we really had to, we could use up all of Ditto's PP by having Ditto explode itself and get revived 10 times in the same battle, and then when Ditto tries to use the attack explosion, it would actually be able to damage the ghost because it struggles. But it turns out that that wasn't even really needed. Because if we can survive for long enough, then Gengar will use up all of its PP, and it'll start to use Struggle. So Agatha's Gengar actually ends up defeating itself bit by bit as it keeps attacking us with Struggle. 
Gengar doesn't defeat itself right away, of course, because once his HP gets low enough, that triggers Agatha to use a full restore, but she luckily doesn't keep using full restores forever, and eventually that Gengar does defeat itself. Agatha sends out a Golbat next, which is like a breath of fresh air because we can just send out Bombdos, explode, and take it out in a single hit. Agatha sends out an Arbuck next, and we can send out our Arbuck, except our Arbuck explodes. Unfortunately, it's not enough damage to one-shot KO their Arbuck, so we send out C4 Turtle, and Agatha didn't use a full restore, so we finished off this Arbuck. The next Gengar that Agatha sends out is level 58, and this one might look scarier at first, but this one is actually a lot easier to deal with. The hardest part about this Gengar is that it has the attack Sludge Bomb, which does burn through a lot of our revives. This Gengar also has the attack Shadow Ball, which doesn't affect normal types because it's a ghost type attack. Gengar's other two attacks are Hypnosis and Nightmare, and the best part about this is that once Gengar uses up all of its Sludge Bombs, it can't hurt normal type Pokemon. Shadow Ball does nothing, and if we are put to sleep with Hypnosis, we can just use our Poke Flute item that we got earlier to wake up our Pokemon. Nightmare can only hurt you if you're sleeping, and if we wake up right away, then nothing can hurt us. So this Gengar can also use up all of its PP, it starts to struggle, and this Gengar eventually defeats itself by being hit with recoil damage, just like the last one. Agatha's last Pokemon is a Haunter, and this Haunter, just like the Ghost Pokemon from earlier in the game, actually knows the move Curse. So whether you get this Haunter to defeat itself by using Curse twice, or you try to use Explosion but you end up struggling because you have no more PP, Agatha has fallen. Agatha has been defeated. All of Agatha's Pokemon are gone. We have 53 revives left for the final two battles, and I'm really hoping that that's enough. We are definitely cutting it close here. The next challenger that we face in the Elite Four is Lance. Lance starts off by sending out a Gyarados. I swap to C4 Turtle and immediately get hit with a Hyper Beam. We very luckily survive with just 5 HP left, and our explosion brings Gyarados' HP low, but hopefully not low enough that Lance uses a full restore. I think Bombdos will be fast, so I send out Bombdos, and we're able to take out Lance's first Pokemon with Bombdos' explosion. Aerodactyl is next, because we haven't had enough Rock-type Pokemon yet. We need one more Pokemon that Explosion is not very effective against still. Aerodactyl uses the attack Ancient Power, which defeats Bird Bomb in a single move, and what's scary about Ancient Power is that sometimes it raises all of the user's stats, so attack, defense, and speed all go up. That makes Aerodactyl even more of a threat, and it makes it hit harder, and it makes our explosions even less effective against it. I swap to Arbuck next, we get blasted with the Hyper Beam, and that takes us out in a single turn. We're running low on Pokemon, but at least we have a free turn now, since Aerodactyl has to recharge after using Hyper Beam. Rataboom, one of our strongest Pokemon, uses an explosion attack here, and that takes Aerodactyl down to almost half health. Aerodactyl keeps blasting through our Pokemon with that Ancient Power, but luckily that move has only 5 PP, so it can't last for too long. When Aerodactyl is done burning through my revives with Ancient Power, it starts burning through my revives with Hyper Beams. Bombdo survives a wing attack from Aerodactyl, and when we use Explosion, we luckily get a critical hit, and that's enough damage to finally take out this Aerodactyl. Next up is Dragonite, which is actually pretty terrifying, but there's something very nice about Dragonite. When it uses the move Outrage, it keeps using Outrage uncontrollably, and when it stops, Dragonite becomes confused. So even though Dragonite also burns through a lot of my revives because it keeps one-hit KOing my Pokémon, it's nice that it sometimes hurts itself in confusion. Bombdos eventually gets a chance to use Explosion on this Dragonite, and a very unlucky outcome happens. Dragonite is in the red HP zone, so that means that Lance will probably use a full restore once it's his turn. But, when I send out my next Pokémon, Dragonite Citrus Berry actually activates because the Pokémon's HP is low. So Dragonite Citrus Berry brings it above the HP zone where Lance uses a full restore. So at our next opportunity, we use Explosion with Bomb Dose, and that's able to take out the Dragonite. Lance has two Pokémon left, he sends out a Dragonair, and Bird Bomb is strong enough to take it out with a single explosion. Lance sends out his final Pokémon, his second Dragonair, and it uses Hyper Beam, which takes out our Blastoise. Bombdose is our only remaining Pokémon, so we have to revive someone before we attack or else we lose the fight because our last Pokémon explodes. 
So we revive Bird Bomb, Dragonair gets to recharge for a turn after using Hyper Beam, and Bomb Dose gets to use Explosion in the next turn, taking out Dragonair, defeating Lance, and the first four members of the Elite Four have been defeated. There's only one fight left, the final champion, and we have got 23 revives left for this fight. We went into the Elite Four with 120 total revives, and we are down to 23 left for the final fight. This is going to be close. We also had four rare candies that we came across during our journey, so I decided to use all of these rare candies on Bomb Dose right now, bringing up their level to 54. This was a challenge of managing money, managing resources, being careful with your revives and healing items, and wearing down your foes to the point where some of them literally struggle themselves to defeat. And it all comes down to this final challenge. The champion starts off by sending out a level 59 Pidgeot, and we start with our Zapdos. Our Zapdos is faster, and its explosion takes out Pidgeot in a single hit, so we are off to an incredible start. Next up is Rhydon, another scary rock type. Why are there so many rock types? Bird Bomb uses explosion, and very luckily we do a huge amount of damage here because of a critical hit. This fight would have been a lot more difficult if we didn't get that critical hit, because Rhydon is at a very good amount of HP right now. It shouldn't be super difficult to finish him off. I use the Ditto as a sacrificial lamb for a turn so that we could revive Bombdos, and when Bombdos was back in the battle again, Bombdos' next explosion attack was strong enough to finish off Rhydon, so that's two of the champion's six Pokémon down so far. Venusaur gets sent out next. This might seem a bit scary to have Blastoise out in this matchup, but luckily Venusaur uses Solar Beam, so I switch over to Arbok, who I think will be able to tank the attack well. The attack does a lot more damage than I think that it would, but we luckily get another free turn to do something while Venusaur uses Solar Beam again. I send out Bomb Dose to use Explosion on Venusaur, wondering how much damage it will do, and it almost defeats Venusaur, it is so close. This match would have been a lot more one-sided if that worked and it did take out the Venusaur, but not even the Citrus Berry that gets activated now can help us here. The champion obviously uses a full restore, and when Arbom uses Explosion next, that takes out more than half of Venusaur's health after that, so it should be easy to finish off Venusaur the next time that we attack it. I send out Rataboom, Venusaur takes in some life for Solar Beam, and Rataboom explodes. That explosion is of course enough to finish off Venusaur, and C4 Turtle actually grows up to level 39 from defeating that Venusaur. The champion has three Pokemon left, and he sends out Alakazam, which has to be one of his scariest Pokemon because it knows the attack Future Sight. Bird Bomb tries to just go for it right away. Alakazam starts with the Future Sight, and we are so lucky that that takes out Alakazam in a single hit. We only have one Pokemon left now, and Future Sight might hit us at any moment, so we need to revive some Pokemon or we might suddenly lose the battle. I'm able to get out two revives before C4 Turtle is defeated, and when I swap to Bird Bomb, that's when the Future Sight attack immediately hits and takes out Bird Bomb in that single turn. We're now down to just one Pokemon, but there's no Future Sight active, and we can use our revives carefully now. We have one Max Revive that we found during the game, and I decide that using the Max Revive on C4 Turtle right now might be a good idea because C4 Turtle can probably do a good job at tanking Gyarados. Gyarados got confused after using the attack Thrash, and it actually hurt itself in confusion a few times in a row. And this was a really great opportunity to heal up the rest of our team and get ready for the rest of the battle. Bombdose uses an explosion when his HP is low, and a lot of our team is healed up now, and Gyarados' HP was low enough that this explosion defeats Gyarados. The champion only has one Pokemon left, and it is Arcanine. The final Pokemon, the final hurdle in this explosive challenge. I try to revive our Bombdose, and Arcanine's flamethrower attacks our Bird Bomb, who is almost at full health, but still gets defeated in a single turn. I send out Bombdose and Heal, thinking that maybe I can tank some hits here, but it looks like two attacks will definitely take out Zapdos. I use some revives to try to attack with Bird Bomb, but Bird Bomb isn't fast enough, and even the attack Bite is strong enough to take out our Bird Bomb in a single move. I send out Bombdose, Bombdose barely survives the flamethrower attack, and I was kind of surprised that Bombdose wasn't faster than this Arcanine. And when we use Explosion, it brings Arcanine into the red, so it looks like the champion is going to use a full restore. We've still got a few revives left here, and I end up in a matchup with Bombdose against Arcanine again, and I use the item X attack here, which increases that Pokemon's attack. Arcanine uses Bite, it doesn't do much damage, and I use a Lemonade to heal up, 
Arcanine uses Bite again, and I get ready to use, hopefully, the final explosion attack of the run. Arcanine uses the attack Bite, it deals damage, we do not flinch from it, and we get to get out an explosion onto Arcanine. Winning this battle actually took quite a few attempts, and I needed quite a bit of luck to be able to make it through this champion fight, but we did it. We completed this explosive challenge. I really appreciate you watching this far into the video. It was amazing to have you along on this journey. Another really fun challenge we did that I have a video about is playing through Pokemon without any Pokemon. We can walk through walls and we look for all kinds of funny glitchy stuff. I mostly make YouTube videos, but I sometimes live stream stuff like this and you're welcome to check out my Twitch live streams if you'd like to see stuff like this live. This challenge was literally and figuratively a blast. It took dozens of hours to make this video. I hope you all have an amazing day ahead of you, and take care, everybody.